One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. The link is in the- So today we're gonna to be talking about approaching a trade. And really, I mean, this is, I, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing this one. There is some prerequisite webinars to this one. Um, just because like I, I wanted to do a kind of a more adept webinar because I, 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 the last like three or four ones I did for you guys were pretty psychological. And so this one will be to the point. I know this is the first webinar of the year. So there's probably a lot of new members, um, where you haven't seen them. So, I mean, if you're watching this on repeat, just go ahead and rewatch those, um, the ones I'm about to show you. But today we're going to be talking about like how to approach a trade, what you need to be prepared for. And, and then the, we're going to go over different kinds of executions for different kinds of trades. But like, yeah, like about a couple of weeks ago, we were kind of just coming off of the, you know, off of the buyer's market in on the micro time frame. For those of you guys who don't know, this is how I judge the macro sentiment. This is how I judge, this is how I judge the current trend of the market. And this is literally like what's going on week to week. And so a couple of weeks ago, we were kind of here in a buyer's market just coming off of that thirsty long period. And then we had two weeks and I just kind of plugged this in here. I, I feel like the last two weeks were kind of slow, kind of dead. We had a lot of slow mornings, but now it's kind of picked up again. Right. Yeah. I'm, when I say day twos, by the way, I don't just mean day twos. I mean, multi-day runners. I should have said multi-day runners, but you know, it, um, it was too long. And this is, this was supposed to be a spin off Star Wars return of the day twos, like the Jedi. It's not, you guys probably didn't get that, but that's what was in my mind. Yeah, day three is day one now, and day five is day two. That's, um, what's up, Val? And so, uh, yeah, long time since Val's been here. I thought you were going to bed. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So, like, longs definitely have control of this market, and, like, and, we, and, and I kind of talked about that today. And, and Val and I and Harry were all kind of talking about that. And, like, I talk about this, I talk about this here where um, the Jan this kind of January effect is, is, you know, has started. It, I don't think it's full force, but it's definitely started. And this combination of like being in January, which is historically a hot market, you know, the Bitcoin being at all time highs, this is a really great combination for um, just an overall bullish atmosphere, you know? And like one thing I saw today and Harry noted it and I posted about it in main chat today. I posted kind of a collection of, you know, different things that Bao said, Harry said, and I said, and we were all saying the same thing, right? Um, we, were, we were saying that like, this is that kind of market. And if you've seen previous webinars, you, you know what I'm, what I'm referencing, where there, there's a market where the range gets really uh, strong. And there's a point in the market where um, you, you don't see a lot of dips, but when you do see a dip, it's big. You're kind of getting these A, you know, these A and B style market market moves, like there's not a whole lot of room if you're wrong. And, you know, you have to learn how to cut those trades because um, they will punish people. And this is where longs often get a little overzealous, right? This is where the longs are get, the longs get trained like for no dips, no dips, no dips, no dips, no dips. And this is why the, the market gets so strong. It's because longs aren't getting their dips so they chase it higher and that works for a week or two until the longs get too comfortable with you know harry called it like the fomo lines are working i was talking about how this is like a no like a no dip market and i think bow phrased it as something like dude like this stock went way up with no dip and that's kind of what we're seeing in this market and that's partially because i think a lot of people have fomo on these bitcoin names and so we're seeing like a lot of chaser stuff and just know that this that this overzealousness can't last forever and so uh, it eventually will uh, punish people. And if you kind of look over to the market sentiment, like this kind of follows it, right? It's like, you know, when we kind of get dead, people get used to, um, people get used to just like normal bounces, normal moves. But then we get into this buyer's market and things just start, things just start skyrocketing and people chase. And then you can kind of imagine how once people start chasing, that's when everything starts getting long crowded. So yeah, like Bao was saying, like you want to kind of just avoid these day ones if you're a short seller because they will run you over. You guys saw FTFT today. Um, that's, it's, it, it's very dangerous on the short side. And so the patterns that I've been noticing that have been working well lately that you guys should probably be focusing on 
um, are continuation are like continuation trades, like a, a day two gap up. If it gaps down into a prior close or, or into some kind of major support, you know, that's Harry and my, Harry has told you that's his favorite trade. I, that's my favorite trade. Um, these stocks are continuing on a bigger time frame. If you zoom out on all of these charts and we'll go over some charts in a minute um, when, when, when it's the key trader section, but you're like, I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to go to the 30 minute charts and the 15 minute charts. And like, I think it's notable on these, you know, in this market where multi-day runners are in full force to zoom the fuck out on some of these charts and, 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 and see if, you know, like, it just tanked VWAP. Okay, that means we're on the back. Like we just tanked VWAP day two. That means that we're on the backside, right? We'll zoom out and see if it's holding like a nice fifteen-minute trend, so that way you don't get squeezed, you know, to infinity. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley, I'm one of the head mentors and moderators at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at two one three four five eight five nine nine seven. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up, back to the video. You know, like it's just something to really keep an eye on in this multi, in this multi-day uh, market, you know, this multi-day move market that we're seeing, right? And so like, I really feel like this, this short, like uh, this short kind of 10 minute, Time frame trade is getting a little bit crowded because everyone kind of has the same idea. And so that's why these moves, like we're seeing the bigger range, like people wanting like a little 10 minute, they'll, they'll buy a dip and it'll dip way lower or their shoulder pop and it'll short way higher. And it's just enough to stop you out. And, and then it pulls back just, and that's just a sign. That's why we keep track of the range week to week, right? Like if you notice that range is stronger than normal, you, you know, you might want to space out your orders a little bit more. So that's, that's why we keep track of this, this stuff week to week. And anyway, what do I think, what do I think that we're here for next? What do I think's coming up? So I, I've been around a lot of sectors and uh, here's the thing. When sectors come out of nowhere, like it's a new thing that we've never seen before. And it's just bang, blam in your face. Those stocks run and run and run immediately off the get go. And they're strong from the from the start until the head gets cut off the snake. We've seen a Bitcoin run before. And the problem with that is that everybody knows Mara. Everybody knows IGC. Everybody knows DPW, right? Riot. Everybody knows these stocks. Like, and even in the Wii stocks, TLRY, CGC. Everybody knows these stocks already. And they know that uh, these are the sympathy runners to uh, the sector. And like, these are the stocks to buy for the sector. And the problem is that they've run before. And so what I've noticed about repeat sectors is they're never as strong as the first time that the sector runs. And so um, what, what I'm kind of guessing is that like initially everyone's like right now, like everyone's late for the initial move of the sector. Everyone right now is frantic and they're like, oh my God, what? Oh my God, what, what's the Bitcoin stock that I need to buy? What's the marijuana stock that I want to buy? Like if you wanted to buy marijuana stocks, you needed to do it before, like the, before the election kind of cycle, you know, then you're kind of getting early. Everyone's like hunt actively hunting it now. And if you start entering in late, like look at the daily chart, if it's up two, three days in a row already, you've missed it. Like, and I think that we can easily see a delayed, um, like kind of like a delayed sector run, you know, uh, on the Bitcoin and, and the marijuana stuff, just because I feel like it's very easy yeah, I, I will. I will in just a second. I feel like it's very easy to get um, for it to get long crowded and then kind of sell off. And then after that kind of first round, what uh, kind of sells off because these stocks have run before, which means there are bag holders in the stock. There's no resistance levels now, and that's going to get in the way. And I think that can add to this potential delay. And then if like next week, two weeks, Bitcoin is then it's, you know, 60K for God's sake. I don't know where the fuck it's going to go. But like, then if, like, if the overall sector is still running, then that, like, you're gonna see these stocks that kind of sold off or the chasers got caught and then that secondary move is going to be the move. I noticed that like on repeat sectors, the, you know, if it survives past the initial push, that second push is stronger. So anyway, yeah, and, Bal and Bal's talking about the three-day rule. The three-day rule, uh, it's almost like the five-day rule with bingo. But the three-day rule is that like after about like three days, 
um, a stock that's on like three days, this is too late to be buying bingo. And I, I, the bingo is a bad example because bingo is up. I mean, bingo went day four before it sold off. This is abnormal, guys. Th these kind of stocks, like they, they, they typically go one, two, three, and then they tank. It's, and of course, it's, it's not perfect, right? Every now and then you're going to get a fourth. But the, the, the main idea is that anything past um, day, anything day three and beyond, you are taking extensive risk if you are on the long side. And what's another good one? Like, what's another, like, maybe FRSX, right? Like, you know, like, we have this kind of move. We have this one day strong move, two strong moves. And on the third, you know, you can't be buying up here on the, on high on the second day or on the third day. What's another, what's another reason why? FTFT is just on day one, right? Yeah, so that's on day one. What's a couple other, what's a couple other recent, recent runners here? Mara. Yeah. Oh, Mara's perfect. Whoever Lou boot. Yeah. So this is, this is where if you're buying here and this is what I think is going to happen, right? People who don't really know the three day rule, people who don't know the three day rule, like they're, they're, they're getting all this kind of FOMO up here and they're, and they've missed it, dude. Like you can't do this. Like, and again, you see it here. Look, one, two, three, like you have a little red day, one, two, three. You can't be buying up here. This is all FOMO. You know, like after this third day, it pulls back if it consolidates for a while here. Yeah. You can buy after it's consolidated, you know, but like, again, like it gets up here and it's again, a no buy zone. Like, like Val said, the risk to reward is you're going to get killed. And like, what, yeah. What, what was the other one? BT, BT. You're going to just get slaughtered on this kind of stuff. Yeah. 845. And that's, this is my last slide. And I, I timing is perfect. That's all I got for today, guys. My voice is shot. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.